there is going to be user uh, participant feedback, so you better be careful with that weather. Uh, okay. Um, oh man, I've got the air conditioning kicked on now, so it's so cold here. We're suffering. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to um, the KPDSB uh, uh, webinar on Explore Learning's product Gizmos. We're welcoming Todd Underwood um, joining us today. And if you've been here for a few minutes, um, you will know that Todd is joining, joining us from Panama. And so where we are recording, it is about minus 35. Where he is um, sharing and leading today, it's plus 33. So, um, you know what? Temperature difference aside, we are colleagues in uh, learning about this great product today. So, Todd, because we've got that tight timeline, I'm going to pass it right over to you. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, participants, I'm going to post the Explore Learning um, link in the chat. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And at a, an appropriate time, uh, Todd will answer those. And it's all yours. All right. Well, great. Uh, so glad to be here. Just real quick, my name's Todd Underwood. And I, again, I am coming to you live from uh, Panama City, Panama, actually in Balboa on the Pacific side, and excited to share gizmos with teachers. A little bit about me um, I went to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, got a degree in marine science, uh, taught for four years with the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute here in Panama. In South Carolina, I did start teaching in 1997, high school science, uh, all kinds of courses from marine science to chemistry, physics. Currently, I am teaching uh, one physics course and three chemistry courses online uh, through a program in South Carolina. But how I got here, I started started there in 97. Around the year 2000, our science department was asked to pilot gizmos for the district. And of course, science teachers, we fell in love with the product and, um, you know, math teachers wanted it, uh, middle school and elementary school teachers wanted it after that. And um, then, so we, we started right away with that and uh, in Horry County, they've been uh, using that in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for, for quite a while. And, um, and, and it's been great. So uh, I'm going to share this with you, and uh, hope hope you'll 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 enjoy it. The last three years I've been doing online, and then I've been here in Panama for the last two months. So super excited to share that with you. And I'm going to just turn my micro my uh, self off here for just a minute, so you can watch the watch that screen here. Um, okay. So just to quick tell you about our trainings. We offer lots of different types of trainings from intro to expanding the Gizmos experience and some pedagogy focused workshops. And they're all meant to take teachers through the four stages of instructional technology. That's the blue arrow that you see across the bottom there. Uh, the adoption stage, that's where teachers are just using Gizmos whole group and kind of kicking off a lab activity or some sort of session with, with their students. Uh, whether it's uh, just a lesson that they want to do and they're sharing whole group. The integration stage is where teachers are both using whole class instruction as well as students with their devices um, jumping in. And if you've had an opportunity to check out Gizmos, you'll know that they all offer a student exploration guide. And so there's going to be close adherence to the lessons that are provided for you there. And then transformation stage, that's where teachers start modifying those lesson materials. And then um, the the in final stage, the invention stage, that's where teachers are creating whole new lesson materials to address very specific instructional needs. And today we're going to learn how to operate the site. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to become some Gizmo students. We're going to show you how to give student access and um, we're going to have some fun. So at the end, my goal for you will be that you'll be able to, after we meet, be able to start planning a lesson to incorporate some of the expectations that you will, might be teaching within the next two weeks. You all use Google Meet, so you are familiar with some virtual meeting norms. These are the gizmos of virtual meeting norms, and part of gathering your materials and getting ready to learn had to do with making sure that you have your account, and if you haven't already done so, um, they'll be able to set that up for you, and so you just contact your 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 people there, and they'll, they'll be able to do that for you. Uh, important questions, we'll throw that into the chat. I'll model quickly a, a lesson just to give you an idea of some of the different features of Gizmos uh, so that you have just that in your 
repository of tricks and so you'll see that and then uh, we'll talk about some of the best practices if you don't mind just mute your microphones if you're not speaking man i wanted to share too that man there's so many different ways to keep uh, to use gizmos so just keep your mind open to new ideas I'm amazed at all the ways that you can use gizmos. Uh, wherever you are, I see lots of you are at school. Some of you might be at home. So uh, maybe you might need to put a little note on the door and that way you can stay engaged and attentive throughout our, our training. And I'm gonna share lots of resources to you. At the very end, don't close out. Uh, I want you to open up some other browsers. I'm gonna give you a link to a Google Drive folder and that'll have all kinds of extra little goodies for you. Make sure you make your own copies of that stuff uh, when when the training's over. There, there's a quick start guide. There's remote learning with Gizmos tip. Uh, there's a parent guide using Gizmos from home that I'll be able to share with you. So that brings us to what is a Gizmo? In the chat, if you don't mind, just um, let me know uh, what you think a Gizmo is, or if you've heard of Gizmos before. What what comes to mind? So what is Gizmos? Go ahead and put that into the um, into the chat there. I started that question out there for you. All right, Michelle, interactive activity. Anybody else? Any other ideas? Some of, anybody not seen gizmos at all or don't know even know what we're talking about yet so far? Jordan says it's a STEM activity. What else? All right. Well, I'm a I'm a child. I've been teaching since 97, so that might give you a clue. I think of don't feed them after midnight. Don't give them any water, right? I think about gremlins. So uh, these are that's the official definition there. And I can tell you that uh, gizmos are online simulations for math and science. They power inquiry and understanding. And gizmos are interactive. They are visual. They provide great subject matter depth and they encourage student inquiry and understanding. So um, the goal of Gizmos is really to help students develop these conceptual understandings in both math and science, and students like to work with Gizmos and teachers love to teach with them. So let's go ahead and sign up for workshop attendance. You can use your phone. Uh, there's also that link. Let me see if I can put that into the chat real quick for us, um, if I can pull that up. Come on. And then basically it's going to ask you for your first and last name and your email address, the school where you teach, and a PD event number. So the PD event number is right here. It's that triple zero five eight five zero seven. In the chat, if you'll just type the letter R for ready, and that will let me know that you are good to go, that you have successfully signed in for workshop attendance. Basically, that's going to trigger uh, an email from your PD implementation manager with Gizmos. That's going to be your contact person from here on out. Um, I'm just teaching, so I can't answer any of your questions <laughs> unless, except for during this training. And then um, what else? Uh, there'll, there'll be a survey monkey link that'll be sent out to you as well. So just type the letter R in the chat once you've uh, signed up for workshop attendance. All right, Michelle's ready to go. Jennifer's ready. Tish is ready. Bill, he's in. Catherine's in. All right, Jordan, do you need any help? no teacher left behind we're not gonna we're not gonna this ship will not sail without you all right here we go so um here we have this just this image of a of a mock classroom setup and so the the difference is here you know you're thinking man no one's wearing masks there's no social distancing uh, but we've got some students up on the stage parents and teachers proudly watching and um so the problem is we don't have students to experience experiment on today. So I need you to be my students. Would you, do you mind being a, just a, a student, any grade level with me today and, um, and want you to be able to, uh, to participate. So if you type the letter Y for yes, if you're willing to be my student for just a few minutes as I model a gizmo lesson with you and give you some ideas of how you can use gizmos in your classroom. 
So I want you, even though you know the content, I want you to be engaged with the content, but I still want you to keep your teacher hats on. Okay, that's gonna be important so that you know that, um, that uh, I, that you can write down some little notes on the side, watch s some of the questioning, the strategies, the inquiry stuff that we do, and then uh, and then we'll come back and talk about it. So here we go. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to make sure that you've, uh, if you can, if you already have an account, go ahead and log into your account and put that on a separate tab, a Google Doc, just a blank Google Doc, and put that over onto the side, and then um, we're going to participate and, and give you an opportunity to to jump in there. And, and have some fun and I'll show you all about that in one second. So here we go. Let me know when you're ready. Once you get your, your three tabs, the Google Meets tab open and then a Google Doc and Gizmos, if you could just Type the letter R for ready in the chat when you've got those three things. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. We can do a search here and I'm gonna, you can follow along if you want. We're gonna do find gizmo and I'm gonna do type in the word plant and I hit enter. And once I hit enter here, it's gonna do the little search and it's gonna come back with, it looks like 27 search results for the word plant and I want to go to a specific one. Oh, come on. Let's see here. I've been on so long this afternoon. It made me start over again. All right. So plant. And we're looking at a specific one. I'm going to give you this link right here directly into the chat. So you don't have to click on anything. But the link growing plants, that's in the chat right there. So go ahead and launch the gizmo. I'm going to enable full screen mode class because that's what we do when I'm sharing gizmos with you. And here's what I want you to do. I'm going to set a timer for two minutes and I want you to use your best observation skills. Go in there and see if you can tell me and be ready to report back to me how this gizmo works. So I'm not telling you anything. I'm just setting a timer, letting you go and um, starting that timer. You go in there, jump in, be prepared to come back and tell me how the simulation works. And for those of you who don't have accounts, I'm going to set one up here for you real quick and let you watch and see what's happening. All right, so we've got just about, um, looks like 50, 49, what did I say that? 45 seconds left. Uh, just go ahead and um, actually for the sake of time, we're just gonna call it. Were you guys okay with that? I think everyone's had enough time to, to explore. So I'm gonna just stop it right there. We're gonna say we did it for a minute and a half. So a minute and a half is up. Go ahead and stop right there, pause, clear. Okay, so in the chat, tell me, how does this thing work? What did you find out? What did you discover? Remember, there's no uh, piece of information or no observation that you might have made that's too small. So in the chat, just go ahead and tell me how this thing works. Uh, so Michelle says that she can compare various plant growths over time. All right, how does this thing work? What are some of the different buttons that I have here and, and how do I make things work? How do I change those variables, Tisha? Are you saying I can change them? What variables are there? If you want to turn your micro microphone on, that is fine. That will speed things up a little bit. Okay, we can change the amount of water. All right, so I'm going to hit reset here but button, and I can will tell you that class, so there's a plus, uh, sorry, a play, pause, and reset, and I can clear pots. And um, to change that water, I can use the slider here. So Tisha, that's how I would do that. And then how light impacts the plant 
in, in terms of growth. Okay, well, I can turn on lights on and off by clicking on them. That's three lights on, that's three lights off. And so I can see those differences there. And to, uh, here I have a whole bunch of supplies, different types of seeds, and then fertilizer and compost. And the one thing that I do want you to see is that there's a camera icon here, and I can take a screenshot of either just one experimental setup, or I can come over here and take a screenshot of all three at one time. So the reason that I asked you to open up a Google Doc was because I want you to be able to right-click an image to copy or download, to copy that image, and then paste it into your Google Doc. So here are the seeds. We're going to hit clear pots. And if I want a bean, I can just drop it in there, grab a turnip seed, and drop it in there. Whatever I want to do, you can do. And and hit play and let that run. Now this runs for 50 days. There's also a data table that cal calculates either a bar graph or a line graph, and I can export the data table if I wanted to. Well, here's what I want you to do. Um, I want you, I'm gonna give you two minutes. We're gonna see who's got the green thumb here in the class, and I want you to grow the tallest plant starting now. Be prepared to tell us how you grew the tallest plant. I want evidence to support your claim that you actually did grow the tallest plant in the class. So once you have your tall plant, I want you to use the snipping tool or, um, yeah, go ahead and hit reset to start over. Uh, use the snipping tool or your camera icon to take a picture and copy and paste that into your Google Doc. And then tell me, you know, why you chose the variables that you chose so, or the different conditions that you chose. So you, everyone, you can do as many different um, trials as you want. J you're just trying to grow the tallest plant and you can go ahead and try some different things. Take an image after each one and put that into your Google Doc. And then we're going to come back. You've got, you've got about one minute left. So uh, everyone should be doing a... A, uh, a setup trial, and then we're going to come back and discuss that. So one minute left starting now, and I'll give you a heads up when it's time to uh, make sure that you have your image copied and pasted into your Google Doc. And for anybody that does not have an account set up, feel free to take a screenshot of my screen and choose which one of those is provides the tallest plant. You have 25 seconds left starting now to make sure that you get your Google Doc um, image pasted in there. Yeah, so make sure that you've got that. So everyone should have an image now pasted. Just pick your tallest plant that you grew in the chat pad. All right, let's go ahead and hit stop right there. We're, we're not creating any new ones. Okay, that's it. That's our time. So what I want you to do is in the chat, go ahead and tell me the height of the plants so we can see who grew the tallest plant in the class. Who had the tallest plant? All right, Tisha came in at, at 52.1 centimeters. 53.4, Jennifer, good job. Catherine, did you hit reset to make sure that you could um, grab your seeds? You should be able to hit reset to start over and just click and drag your seeds into your pot. I couldn't see a reset. Uh, it's a little turn arrow. I'm showing, I'm circling my mouse around it on the screen right now clear pots and then down in the bottom right hand corner there's a play pause and reset button all right so it looks like jennifer grant has the tallest plant so jennifer what i'm going to do with you right now jennifer i'm going to share a link with you and i want you to copy and paste your plant image into the chat in our, sorry, into that Google Doc. So I've got a Google Doc, and if you don't mind, Jennifer Grant, share your image with us. Just paste it underneath that title there. And let's talk about why you chose those different conditions. 
All right, so we've got 53.4. Thank you, Jennifer, for putting that in there. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger for us to see. Whoa, went too big. That's okay. All right, so so tell us about the choices that you made. What were you thinking? Uh, well, first I started with just the bean. So I lined them up with just the bean, the bean mm -hmm. with compost and the bean with fertilizer mm -hmm. and let it run. Or sorry, before that, I put one of each bean in to see which bean would grow the tallest okay. after 30 days. And it was the bean. So then I went with the bean, with the bean with compost, um, the bean with compost and fertilizer. Sorry, I'm just trying to think. Sorry, the bean with compost, the bean with fertilizer, mm. and then the bean with compost and fertilizer. Um, and it actually ended up being the bean with compost grew slightly bigger, not by much, only one tenth of a centimeter higher okay. than having fertilizer and compost. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. Now, let me ask a couple questions from the class. And this is you two. Uh, so can we tell uh, whether it was because Jennifer chose to put all three lights on or because she uh, moved her water, left it at 50 milliliters of water, or that she just used soil with compost. Can we tell which one of those three changes um, had the greatest impact on her bean growth? Do we know which one of those had the biggest impact? When you look at all three of them, you can tell. Okay, but just by looking at here, right okay, here at this, yeah. at this um, setup, can we tell which one of these conditions had the greatest impact on the plant growth? Whether it's light, water, or soil well, type. I don't think, no. No, 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 we can't. And so um, these little conditions that we're changing, what are those called, class? What would we... What, would, what do we call in, in science um, these conditions that we change? What's that word that we use? Variables. Thank you, Michelle. And so we know that we've got these variables. We don't want to change all of them at once. We don't know which one um, has the greatest impact. So um, what are the variables that we do change called? Do you remember we were talking about a couple of different types of variables? Okay, possibly controlled variables. Yeah. So, um, so whenever we do, let me ask another question first, just to see if we can get get on that same page. Um, just to remind you from our vocabulary that we were studying yesterday, what is it called when we just test one variable at a time? I know this one: independent, dependent, independent. Yeah, so we, we call that, a, some would say it's called science, right? So uh, it's an experiment or a controlled experiment, and we've got independent and dependent variables. So that's right. Uh, so what's the one variable called, though, that we change? Is that the independent variable or the dependent variable, the one that we are manipulating or changing? Hmm. All right, we've got two choices here. Catherine's the independent variable. And so what's the variable, Jennifer, that um, that we measure at the very end that we were trying to, to get? What was height? Which variable was that one? Jennifer Shears. That was height, right? So that was the dependent variable was height. That's that's right. It's, well, it, you are sure. You said it was dependent. So the dependent variable is the height because that's what what we were measuring. And then our independent variable would be the variables that we're what, that we're changing. Now, variables that we don't change, we're going to call those constants because we're going to keep them the same throughout uh, each of the different setups for our experiment. Okay, now I've got a special challenge for you, um, and that is going to require you to put your math minds to work. So I'm giving you um, $10 each, and we have a special, uh, spe special 
grant that I was able to get for to give each of you ten dollars, and we are actually going to um, our province's fair, and um, you have got to stay on budget though. But this time, instead of height, I want you to grow the most massive plant. So we're going to see who can grow the ma most massive plant, and here's your price list. Remember a couple tricky things whenever you start your simulation that light bulbs are $2 each and they all started on. So you might need to turn it off. Each one will save you $2 that you turn off. So just consider that. Make sure you do all your math first before you try your one trial to grow the tallest plant. And so that's going to be your homework. And then we're going to come back and, and see who grew the most massive plant. Sorry, the most massive plant uh, tomorrow. And so we have one unfinished piece of business today, and that is our special plant champ height award. That goes to Jennifer Grant. Congratulations. Uh, you are our plant champ. If you want to take a screenshot of that and show that to your husband, who, who may or may not think that you are a plant champ, um, you can share, share that to, with him, and you can say that today you definitely are. He's a high school science teacher, so I'll have to challenge him after. <laughs> All right. So let's come back and just real briefly talk about uh, some of those best practices um, that, that we could have accomplished in those things. So uh, for sake of time, I'll, I'll share just a couple of things. But um, you put in, go ahead and in the chat or turn on the microphone and just tell me what it is that you think were some good practices that we could do with students there. What were some best practices? All right, um, we have multiple entry points. Okay, what else? Opportunity to explore and experiment. Oh yeah, I'll throw some of those asks. I think that, you know, when you at, ask students to ask those what if questions, mm -hmm. I mean, like some of you went in there, you tried different seeds to see which one would grow the most. So you were asking those, what if I try this seed? You know, you were asking those uh, yourself as a student, you were just thinking that way. So uh, incorporate vocabulary, give students an opportunity to ask those uh, what if questions and allow students to control the gizmo. Here we also integrated some math into our into our simulation. Now I want to show you just some basic functions real quick of gizmos just so that you know. So lesson info is a great place to get information. Look what com what comes up. We have Word documents, Google Docs, you can use if you're using Google Classroom or Google Suites, you can very easily, even if you don't, you can very easily share these with students, edit them, modify them, don't share the answer key with anybody. And then when you look at full lesson info, you'll be able to see that we also have other things from our community. Uh, here you see things like growing plants, teacher guide in French. So you have lots of different, um, here's claim evidence, reasoning prompts for groups. So you have lots of other extra resources that are found there. Also, when you go into your, your class and you set up from your home page, uh, there's on-demand PD that gets you to some of those other resources and I'll share some of those links with you as well. So on demand PD and let me give you this one. I just uh, went right to my name in the top right hand side from my account and just click on my picture. Remote learning PD resources and let me just give you this link so that you can have access to all kinds of things like our uh, STEM cases, lists and different class lists. If you scroll down here to shared gizmos list, you'll find all that information over here. Uh, AP and IB uh, lists of uh, courses as well. So when you go to set up your classes, you just go to my home page from your name in the top right hand side and just add a new class. Give it a class tab name. Keep it short and sweet and include uh, you know, a more full name for your class name. To enroll students, just give them that code that pops up. 
to search for gizmos, you can go here by top grade and topic. What I would suggest is go here and go by academic standard. Scroll down here, switch country to Canada, and then we can go to Ontario. And then you'll see the math and science expectations over here. And you can just go there by those grade levels and subjects and click on those and that'll give you all that information. But one of the th things I wanna share with you before we close is that in your classes, all kinds of uh, great information is right here in the help articles. When I create a class, I want to be able to bring in a gizmo. So let me just pull up a gizmo and then uh, give you that opportunity to see what that looks like. I can add it to my class. Here I'm going to add it to my second block class. And then um, maybe add a heading here. That This is my could be my unit on matter. And hit add. And so once you have a gizmo, you can add a heading. And what I would suggest is, is do all the work up front. Here I have a first block chemistry class, and this is my second block. And so I've already created headings per, per each unit of my syllabi and uh, added one to four gizmos for each. And then what I can do is come over to my second block class after I've already done all that work. Let me just delete this stuff out of here and then import the gizmos from that class. And I'll be able to bring all that in there. My tip is though to hide the ones that you don't want students to see until you're ready for them to actually work on that. And then once you have them in there, you'll be able to manage your class roster and see results from the five assessment questions that are in, underneath each gizmo. And you'll be able to see a heat map of those results. All right, let's go ahead and wrap things up here real quick. And uh, then I'll see if we have any questions and make sure that you have all the resources that you need. Um, and then one other thing I'll mention is STEM cases. This is where students take on the role of a STEM professional. For example, the enzyme STEM case that's pictured here, students take on the role of a veterinary technician and they have to help that poor doggy who's been eating normally but then all of a sudden starts losing a lot of weight so enroll students is very easy you just give them that class code every gizmo has five assessment questions and on every gizmo page there's a question mark on the bottom right hand side that will allow you to access um, self-help okay uh, so you can't do duplicate a class, but you can duplicate a class just the way that I showed you um, where I would suggest you go in and uh, cr just create the new class tab and then just import the entire class that you've already set up. And then a whole bunch of resources I'm going to throw in here for you. I just so, wish we had more time. Here we go. I know. This, it's so tight. Okay, this so is a, a Google form of the gizmo that I created for um, the growing plants gizmo. I'm also going to give you a link to the quick start guide and then a, a link to the Google Drive. And so this should get you everything that you need to know to get started with gizmos and uh, then you'll be able to to jump in and start using them. And there's lots of other resources on that PD development page, on demand PD, that you can watch videos on how to get things set up. And think about getting ready to jump in there and take our next training, the expanding training. Mm -hmm. But just start small, but start. Don't be afraid to fail. Plan out a lesson. Jump in there and find your groove with using gizmos, and you'll have fun uh, and enroll your students as soon as possible with those. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Todd. That was, um, and you got a lot into that uh, 33 minutes. So thank you so much. Um, does anybody have any questions for Todd while we have um, a well, um, you know, experienced user of Gizmos um, right now? I think we probably have a group pretty anxious to get started. Okay, I'm going to share just a couple lists here. This is just some of my favorite uh, physics and astronomy gizmos. And then um, I'll also share the one class that I already showed you, and that was the, uh, the chemistry course, just so you, you can see how I, you could take and create those headings. 
and um, have that in there. So lots of great resources in there for you. Mm -hmm. Todd, do you happen to know, I mean, I know you're teaching secondary, but is there like a sort of um, just try this gizmo that our educators could, um, that's like an entry point, not necessarily um, as tightly connected to curriculum? I do a search for alien to find uh, effects of environment on a new life form. That's just a, a good one to get students thinking and learning. There's so many of the features like I showed you with growing plants today. And so here you can see it's kind of a basic scientific method right. type gizmo. And it's, it's fun. You have these aliens and they have different body sizes and you have light, water and temperature. And you're trying to find out which condition has the greatest effect on them and they have a graph there as well a bar chart and uh and a lot of data that can can be collected and get students start thinking about that that's a that's a perfect recommendation kids can buy into that play around with all the features um you know start to share their observations and defend what they've discovered and and you're not feeling like it's tied to a mark so great that's i think that's great thank you you're and welcome you know, all right, any other questions? You have me, so I'm, the workshop is over, but you still have me, so I'll, I'll stick around here and, uh, and, and really thank Michelle for putting all this stuff together and getting everybody here and uh, excited to share any other information, but you guys stay healthy and safe and have a great rest of the school year. Like I said, I've been using, um, I've been using these as a teacher with my students for a very long time, and there seems to always be creating new gizmos, uh, some great chemistry gizmos. If, if that's uh, one of your topics, there's chemical changes um, that I would suggest that uh, gets students into a lab type setting. There's uh, cell types, uh, gets students with a microscope and learning how to use a microscope and lots of things, uh, looking at living versus non-living properties. Uh, coral reefs is a great one for invasive species and looking at mm -hmm. some of those topics or just actually just letting it run as a, um, just you can just watch it. Uh, just let the, let the gizmo run and just uh, use it as a, as a screen screensaver, so uh, we'll let that run here. Load up in there. It's, it's thinking. I uh, but, I like that idea. Considering the uh, view out of our out of our windows today, yeah. and as we consider um, getting our vehicles started to uh, get home, that's that's a great choice for us. I'm going to stop the recording. I sincerely thank you for joining us in KP and just to let everyone know who's here, we've got a direct, um, if you email me, I can email Todd or Sarah with questions just to um, say, hey, like we want to do this, can we, or have an issue with this. We already got one problem solved that uh, Jen noticed, connected with Sarah and um, seamless um, registration today so thank Fantastic. you everyone for coming and yeah. definitely let us know if you have any questions yeah we do offer also stem case training as well specifically for those and there's a video that you can watch for each one of those before you guys leave would you mind just telling me the grade level and subject that you mm -hmm. teach in the chat just um, mm -hmm. just curious for my own uh, oh, for you're my going own to, uh, you're, ideas you'll, you'll love to hear Jordan's grade level and number of students if you have time Jordan <laughs> You you have K through eight. Wow, all of them. So that's that's great. Is that a um, what's the top the subject for Jordan? All of them. <laughs> Every subject. Yeah, I'm elementary and junior, right? So um, I'm uh, I'm teaching all the subjects, right? Except for art. I don't teach art. I don't teach music. Um, I don't.